you a brief introduction to inclusive blended learning design. So, what is inclusive blended learning design? Let's break that down. First of all, what do we mean by inclusive in this context? Well, essentially opportunities for all students to actively engage in learning. And by that we mean being able to engage in learning regardless of factors such as location, time and pace, as well as allowing for flexibility of modes in delivery and engagement. Secondly, what do we mean by blended? Although blended usually refers to a mix of face-to-face -face and online, in this context it's more useful to define blended as a combination of asynchronous online and synchronous online or on-site delivery. Asynchronous being self-paced and synchronous being, if you like, live. And what do we mean finally by learning design? Well, simply put, it's the capturing and sharing of teaching practice. We usually express designs in the form of a storyboard or timeline and it's a way of addressing and communicating the key practical aspects of teaching. In other words, what do I do with my students? What do I want my students to do? So that's what inclusive blended learning design is. What does an inclusive blended learning design look like? Well, First of all, a design will have a sequence of at least two learning activities. These might be content focused, in other words where students interact with course materials such as a text or a video tutorial, or they might be creating content of their own such as a drawing or sculpture. Activities could also be more contact focused, in other words involving interaction with tutors or peers, for example during a discussion or crit. Secondly, each activity will happen either asynchronously or synchronously. Content focused activities are usually asynchronous as this enables students to interact at their own preferred pace of learning whereas contact focused ones can be either asynchronous or synchronous and this really depends on the context of your course and the availability of students to engage in real time. The third and final design element is the feedback from one activity to the next. Feedback is important for assessing the extent to which students are learning and developing their practice. So to illustrate how this works in practice, here's a simple inclusive blended learning design to consider. So we start off with a content focused activity delivered asynchronously. In this case, students are asked to read an article and critically respond in a group forum while commenting on at least one or other student's post. Note that we're not just asking them to read the text, we're asking them to capture and share evidence of their engagement, which will inform the following contact-focused activity. This feedback is as important for teachers as it is for students to assess the extent to which students are understanding or not understanding, or how well their creative practices are developing. The synchronous activity which follows is, is, is a real-time discussion which the tutor facilitates and the discussion is based on the forum responses which have been gathered from the first activity. Now we could leave things there but it's a good idea to add a third activity in the sequence for students to consolidate their learning. In this case we're asking students to select a theme or subject from a discussion and collaboratively produce a shared document to evidence their learning. Now clearly any students to participate in the synchronous activity wouldn't be in a position to engage with activity 3. So for this reason it's a good idea to record synchronous sessions whenever possible or to document it in some useful form or other so that such students can review the session and be included in the learning design. So that's it for this brief introduction to inclusive blended learning design. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.